Every living entity is covered by a subtle and gross body. The subtle body is the covering of mind, ego, intelligence and consciousness. It is said in the scriptures that the constables of Yamaraj cover the subtle body of the culprit and take him to the abode of Yamaraj to be punished in a way that he is able to tolerate. He does not die from this punishment because if he died, then who would suffer the punishment? It is not the business of the constables of Yamaraj to put one to death. In fact, it is not possible to kill a living entity because factually he is eternal. He simply has to suffer the consequences of his activities of sense gratification. The process of punishment is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Formerly the king's men would take a criminal in a boat in the middle of the river. They would dunk him by grasping a bunch of his hair and thrusting him completely underwater. And when he was almost suffocated, the king's constables would take him out of the water and allow him to breathe for some time. And then they would again dunk him in the water to suffocate. This sort of punishment is inflicted upon the forgotten soul by Yamaraj as will be described in the following verses. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta. So here we are seeing Lord Kapila's instructions to Mother Devahuti. He is continuing to describe what happens to the conditioned soul. And in this verse, Lord Kapila is saying how the soul after he dies, what happens to him. And he had engaged in uh, sense gratification. And so now he has to undergo a certain reaction for that. And so he has a body, Yatana Deha Avritya, Yatana Deha. Uh, yatana is uh, agony or misery one has to go through, which is a punishment. And so Yatana Deha, he is punished in his uh, a different kind of a body not this gross body, it is the yatana deha, a body just suitable for punishment. Avritya, they cover, they capture. Pashair bhadva gale balat. So this yatana deha, they tie Pashair bhadva with ropes, gale balat, and hold him by the neck by, with strong ropes. Nayato dhirgham advhanam. Nayataha, they lead him for a long distance, advhanam. Dandyam raja bhatayatha. Just as a criminal, dandyam, uh, who deserves to be punished, dandyam, raja bhatha, a soldier of the king, yatha, as a soldier of the king, uh, treats a criminal in the same way. Uh, the conditioned soul is grabbed by strong ropes and taken a long distance to Yamaraj. As a criminal is arrest arrested for punishment by the constables of the state. Dandyam Raja Bhatha Yatha. A person engaged in criminal sense gratification is similarly arrested by the Yamadus, Yamadutas, who bind him by the neck, gale, with a strong rope. Balat, Pashair, bind him, Bhadva, and cover his subtle body, Avritya, so that he may undergo severe punishment, Yatana. So this is what is happening to the conditioned soul. 
after death. So Srila Prabhupada has explained in the purport a little bit more about the Atana Deha. For the subtle for the sense gratification that the living entity has engaged in in his life. Now he has to undergo a certain punishment. But this body is actually not very suited for that punishment, this gross body. You try to punish this body in different ways. It has a way to react. And mostly the person will go become unconscious and then he cannot suffer anymore. There's no suffering. Or apparently it appears. <clears throat> so, this body is not actually very suitable for the severe punishment that he deserves. So the body, the gross body is left behind, the subtle body consisting of mind, ego, intelligence and consciousness. This, with the soul is extracted out of this body. And that subtle body is bound by Yamadutas and they are carried. The subtle body is carried, preparing him for more punishment. Just as Dandyam Rajabhatayatha. So the Yamadutas intent is not to kill him. If they kill him, then what about who will suffer then? He has to experience that. That's the intent. So they won't kill him. They take him, extract his subtle body and the subtle body will be subject to all this suffering and uh, we will see the different kinds of suffering that he has to go through. And if this gross body is subjected to any of those, immediately the, we will die. Then who should suffer? So another kind of a body is required. That's the Atana Deha. A body just suitable for punishment. And that kind of a body is actually, which is in that body the living entity undergoes this suffering. So here Prabhupada has used one expression in the translation, a very interesting, thought-provoking expression. A person engaged in criminal sense gratification. Someone can ask this question. God gave us the senses. And the senses are looking for gratification. They are attracted to certain objects of senses. And if we engage in the senses with the sense objects, we are called a criminal and we are punished in this way. Is this a very fair game? After all, God gave us these senses and we try to satisfy the senses according to their different nature and we get punished for that. How do we understand this? <clears throat> so is sense gratification a crime? Why is this arrangement like that? I try to gratify my senses and then I'm punished. So this actually brings us to an understanding of what is the situation we are in. We hear about, now some devotees have gone to Kumbha Mela, we know Kumbha Mela is happening in our country and we know Kumbha Mela is about 
churning of the milk ocean by the demons and the devo and the asuras and the asuras. And usually when we depict asuras, right, in Indian art, religious art, or in any other sculptures, generally asuras are depicted as dark people and some horns and ugly and they look terrible and they have protruding teeth and, and all those kind of things. That's interesting way of depiction in art. But who is actually an asura? Krishna explains in the Gita, in those descriptions, Krishna never says asuras are those who have horns and terrible teeth. Krishna's explanation is very, very simple. Pravrithim cha nivrithim cha janana vidhura asuraha. Pravrithim cha nivrithim cha janana vidura asuraha. Nashaucham napi chacharo nasatyam teshu vidyate. Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha jana na viduru viduhu asuraha. Na viduhu, they don't know. This is the defining characteristic of a demon, as explained in the Gita. Pravrittim, nivrittim, na viduhu. They don't know what is pravritti, what is nivritti. Pravritti here means what is right action and nivritti means inappropriate or wrong action. Na viduhu. They simply don't know. They are called asura. Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha janana vidhura asura. That means they have come into this world. They don't know what is right action and what is wrong action. Na shaucham. There is no purity in them. There is no cleanliness in them. Purity and cleanliness is both external and internal. External is about the body, you can bathe and wear clean clothes. But internally also clean. Na shaucham, na chacha, na pichacharo, na acharaha. They don't know what is right behavior. Na satyam, nor are they interested in truth. Teshu vidyate. Such people are known as asura. So here, it's like this. We come into this world, we have a body, we are born in a certain family. And there is a certain culture around us that tells us do this, do that. Of course, if you are born in India, you are very fortunate. The culture is aligned with God's intent. But otherwise, <clears throat> like in modern society, they say that one should be uh, secular life. Life not determined by any religious considerations. then how will we know what we should do, what we should not do? Suppose you join a company uh, and you become an employee and the company will tell you, will give you certain resources. They will give you a car maybe, they will give you a computer maybe, mobile phone or whatever, different things, facilities they will give you. And you are supposed to find out what is your role and use all those resources that are provided to you 
to meet the objectives of the institution, of the organization. And if you use it for anything else, you will be punished. So you must know, you are expected to know, and there will be an arrangement, hopefully, in every organization and an institution, there is a certain arrangement of induction and where you are told what is this organization is about and what you should do, how you should do. And so you are supposed to conduct yourself according to that because the organization or the institution has some objective. Maybe it's a business organization and their objective is to make some profit. And you are expected to know that. Now look at our situation. In the same way we come into this world <coughs> and this world is like a huge institution as, or an organization and there is a certain purpose for which this organization, this world has been created and we have not bothered to find out what is the purpose of this organization and what I must do, what constitutes right action, what constitutes in un wrongful action. We have not bothered to find out and we are just going about. And that a person who does not know what is right action, what is not right action, who is not clean, who is not pure, who is not truthful, such a person is an asura. So we are expected to know. And dharma, religion, is expected to provide that kind of a direction to human society. So those who follow dharma are suras and those who don't follow asu dharma are called asuras in a general, in a broad sense. So now coming to this issue, if we engage in sense gratification, will that become, will that make me a criminal? That dandyam raja that I'll be, I'll be punished like by the raja bhattas, by those constables, soldiers, representatives of the king, that I'll be punished. So. Yes, actually, and, and Vedas talk about dharma, and if we follow the Vedas, the elementary portion of the Vedas are talking about kamatmana svargapara. If you follow the Vedas, Vedic injunctions, you will get punya so that you can enjoy more. That's the early part of the preliminary part of the Vedas. That's why it is called Kamatmana Swargapara. Imam, Yaim, Imam, Pushpitam, Vacham, Pravadhanti, Avipaschitaha. Krishna is describing what is the subject matter of the Vedas. Vedas are about instructions about how a living entity should conduct and enjoy sense gratification in this world by ac acquiring punya. Now, if I engage like that, what will happen to me? Yes, the, that is actually a preliminary instruction and that is why in the very next verses after that, Krishna says, Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nishtraigunya Bhavarjuna. This is a statement of where does Krishna say we should go beyond the Vedas? This is the verse. Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nishtraigunya Bhavarjuna Nirdvandvo Nitya Sattvastho. Yoga Kshema, Nir Yoga Kshema, Atmavan. Krishna's instruction is to become Atmavan, to be situated as a spirit soul, to be situated 
on a spiritual platform to be situated in the self not to be situated in the bodily level if we are situated on the bodily level we will be <coughs> sorry running after sense gratification in different ways so this brings us to higher aspects of dharma and the bhagavatam presents the highest aspect of dharma so when vyasa deva met narada muni and he explained to him that as ordained as uh, i was inspired i have compiled all the vedic literatures in this way and i have systematically divided the vedas and then the puranas are there and the and the and the upanishads are there i have comp- i have divided all of this and i have entrusted it to different sages and the different sages are teaching this in the human society so in those sections of the vedas there is generally an alliance of sense gratification in a in a controlled manner the response of that for by narada muni is that this is one of the verses in the first canto of the bhagavatam jugupsitham dharma krite nushasatah swabhava raktasya mahan vyatikramah these are some of the very interesting verses important verses that defines how bhagavatam is different from the rest of the vedic knowledge in the sense that this is representing the highest aspect of vedic na narada muni's response was vyasa deva what you have done in the form of the vedas is to be verily condemned very strong word jugupsitam dharma krutenu shasatah swabhava raktasya mahan vyatikramah you have done a biggest blunder the living entities are swabhava raktasya mahan vyatik they are naturally inclined to sense gratification especially in kali yuga and you have given them in the form of dharma anushasatah in the form of dharma you have given them how they can enjoy sense gratification this is mahan vyatikramah jugupsitam verily to be condemned yad vakyato dharma iti itarah sthitha namanyate tasya nivaranam janah yad vakyatah based on your word they will think dharma iti this is dharma they will think and they will pursue that but that's not the highest thing no no vyasa deva said no no we are not not at the muni i have also put some restrictions how much they can enjoy sense gratification namanyate tasya nivaranam janah they will not care for that namanyate so very strongly vyasa deva uh, narada muni advises vyasa deva narada muni is judging like a teacher judges a student vyasa deva you have done all this now i am going to give you my judgment on this what i think i am going to evaluate what you have done what you have done in the form of writing the vedas and all of these descriptions you have this is to be fully condemned jugups despicable jugupsitam means this is not the right thing jugupsitam dharma krute anushasatah anushasatah dharma krute anushasatah in the form of dharma you have anushasatah you have given so many instructions do this don't do this do this don't do this act like this do this punya karma you will get lot of uh, punya and then you can enjoy in this way this is what you have taught for swabhava raktasya for the conditions souls in the material world 
who are swabhava raktasya, who are naturally inclined to sense gratification, this is mahan vyatikramaha. You have done a big blunder. This is to be condemned. This is not the right thing. So here you see how Narada Muni is also telling Vyasa Deva that sense gratification is not good. This is the whole, this is the difference between the Vedic approach and the Bhagavatam's approach, the Bhagavad Gita's approach. That is why the Vedic system is known as Pravritti Marga, the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam's Marga is known as Nivritti Marga. Nivritti Marga is the path of detachment, Pravritti Marga is the path of attachment, the path of regulated attachment. So that those regulations will regulate a conditioned soul who is inclined to sense gratification and over a period of time, over several lifetimes, he can gradually be corrected. That's the slow process that Veda Vyasa had in, had, uh, had uh, in mind when he compiled the Vedas. But Narada Muni is saying that strategy won't work in Kali Yuga. That's why Bhagavatam sets out to say, Dharma projita kaita otram paramo nirmatsaranam satam. This literature, Bhagavatam, will teach Dharma, kai, dharma projita kaita otram. Kaitava dharma pra ujjita, meaning completely rejecting, keeping aside. And if the true dharma, cheating dharma should be removed and true dharma has to be followed. Who can follow that? Dirmat saranam satam. It requires very high qualifications. And Prabhupada translates nirmat saranam satam as those who are 100% pure in the heart. A very high qualification. So now the question comes, why is sense gratification so bad. In the next verse, Narada Muni explains, Vichakshano asyarhati veditum vibho anantaparasya nivruttitaha sukham. Vichakshano asyarhati, arhati means who deserves, who is Qualified. Veditum vibho. Ananta parasya vibho. Veditum. If one has to understand the Supreme Lord, who is vibho, the Supreme, who is Ananta parasya, who is unlimited, you require two things. Narada Muni is saying, Vichakshano asyarhati. Who has, who deserves to understand Veditum Vibho? Who, who deserves, who is qualified to understand the Supreme Lord? Who is Anantaparasya? Nivrutti Tahasukam. He sets out two qualifications. One has to be Vichakshana. Vichakshano Asyarhati. Veditum Vibho Anantaparasya Nivrutti Tahasukam. The second qualification is he must be nivritta taha sukham. He should be detached from sense enjoyment. This is the such a person asya arhati veditum vibho ananta parasya vibho veditum arhati. He is competent. He is qualified to understand. That is why Bhagavatam is about understanding the Supreme Lord. And if we want to understand the Supreme Lord, Nivrutti Taha Sukham Vichakshanaha. One has to be intelligent and one has to be expert in understanding the Vedic literatures, understanding what is the intent and Nivrutti Taha Sukham. In fact, Narada Muni tells him another thing. Vichakshano asyarhati veditum vibo ananta parasya nivritti taha sukham pravarthamanasya gunair anatmanaha. 
But the living entities in Kali Yuga are pravartamanasya gunaihi. Under the clutches of the modes of material nature, they are anatmanaha. They are not situated in spiritual existence. They are situated in a material existence about their body. What do we do for them? Tato bhavan darshaya cheshtitum vibho. This is another strategy that Narada Muni is working out and presenting to Vyasadeva. Tato bhavan darshaya. So you must show, you must delineate, you must show another method. Bhavan darshaya. You must show what? Cheshtitum vibho. You must describe the pastimes and the activities of the Supreme Lord. Vibho cheshtitum darshaya bhavan. That is why in the Srimad Bhagavatam you will find the description of Krishna and his Krishna's activities and the avatara's different incarnations of the Lord. Now you can relate this. The six questions the sages asked. One of them was, they, want, they said, please explain avatara katha. And they asked the question, why did Krishna appear as Devaki and son of Devaki and Vasudeva? <coughs> what was the reason? And please tell us, what is the highest? Ekanta taha shreya, tatra tatra anjas ayushman, bhavan bhavata yad vinishchitaha, what you have ascertained to be the highest? Pumsam ekanta taha shreya, shamshitum arhasi, tanno shamshitum arhasi. So please explain to us, what is ekanta taha shreya, what is the highest benefit for every living entity? Which is actually... The yat saram samudhrutya manishaya, which is actually essence of the Vedic literature. You see, what happened? The six, the sages in Naimisharanya, they asked six questions. Actually, those six questions were about the essence of the Vedic literatures, which brings the highest benefit to the living entity, all living entities, and which is actually in line with the Intent of the Lord, why the Lord came as Devaki and Vasudeva, son of Devaki and Vasudeva. What was his intent? <coughs> and what did he do? What were his activities? And finally, in this Kali Yuga, people who are in, in ignorance, where they will go, where they will find true dharma? These were the six questions that the sages asked. And the subject matter is about the Bhagavatam. And that is why when Narada is talking to Vyasadeva, he is actually telling him very similar thing. Not the gradual process of slow pravritti marga. That is too slow. People in Kali Yuga will become more entangled if they try to follow that. They need an alternate process. What you have given is verily to be condemned. This is, this is not all right. Mahan Vyatikramaha. Now we see how. And why is it so? Because if we take the true nature of ourselves about who we are, we must know who we are. What is this body? We are come into this world, we get a certain body. And we start acting. And then we start using this body for our sense gratification. <coughs> we are not trying to understand what is the purpose of this creation. And who am I? Why have I come into this world? Why did I get a certain kind of body? I was uh, reading one article written by one psychologist. I'm supposed to be a very, very intelligent psychologist of our times. And then he is describing... That it is a fact that people have very, very bad times in this world. Whether one is in a developed country or an undeveloped country or a developing country, everyone has to suffer in this world. He is describing that. So it's a fact. Even if you are, you are fortunate, if you are lucky and you made it, you are, you are intelligent, you are very talented, and you had the you know, good family, even then, the fact is that this world is miserable. 
So these are things that it should set us into thinking, why are we in this kind of a situation? What am I supposed to do? Who am I? You see, when Sanatana Goswami met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, these were his questions. The world considers me to be a Pandita, because Sanatana Goswami, they were considered to be very learned people. But I don't know who am I and why I am suffering in this world. Actually, we should deeply think about it. That is the, that is the ground reality issues. We are here in this world and we are suffering. Even if we dodge suffering in this way, you know, I am very rich, I am very powerful, I am very sharp, I am very intelligent. Finally, old age comes and death comes, finished. So why is this the way it is? Who am I? So these are the important questions and it is the Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita, the advanced sections of the Vedas which provide us an answer. No, we are part of the relative truth. We can't have our existence independently. We are Amsha of the Lord. Which means, we are Amsha of the Lord, means there is a Lord and we are His Amsha. And hence we must understand what is the intent of the, of the Lord and why He has created this world, why He has created us, what, are, what is the real situation. That understanding will bring us to the point of that understanding that I am not the body, I am a spirit soul. The body gets, the spirit soul gets this body for a certain length of time according to certain laws of nature. And according to the laws of nature, we get a body for some time and then we take another body. This goes on. And if we are fortunate in the human form of life, we come in touch with a pure devotee who has understood the true essence and can present that. And that true essence is coming in a parampara. It is not something that was created by a group of people. No, it is a knowledge that is coming down from Krishna himself. But when Krishna himself presents this knowledge, he sees whether somebody is qualified. Then he will give this ultimate knowledge. Otherwise, he gives a compromised knowledge, which is the Kaitava Dharma. Kaitava Dharma has its place. It helps slow progression in a human society over several lifetimes. The living entity can progress. But in Kali Yuga, it, that slow progress is not very desirable because one will get entangled in sense gratification and generation after generation the opportunity for spiritual life is diminishing. Opportunity for true, genuine spiritual life is diminishing. Mandabhagya and Upadrutaha they are always disturbed. So because spiritual life requires a certain tranquility, a certain tranquil introspection. If one is very, very disturbed in their life, struggling day after day to meet the ends of, you know, you know to meet the basic needs of, the, of uh, life, one is struggling, working very hard. Where is the tranquility to introspect? What's happening to me? What is the purpose of this life? What is this life about? It is not possible and, and we are seeing that happening. Every decade, life is becoming more complicated and it is continuing to become more complicated. So, Kali Yuga, these are the disadvantages. So, an alternate quick process is required and that's what Bhagavatam is presenting. That is what Narada Muni wanted Vyasadeva to present. And a very similar situation was in the case of Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj was cursed to die in seven days. He only had seven days. And so he was also looking, what is it that I should do? What is the right thing? <coughs> and there were several sages. He consulted them. And all those sages 
gave different versions. You must do yoga, you must do karma, gradually you can do this, you know, different things. But somehow he was not satisfied. At that time, Shukadev Goswami comes there. And then when Shukadev Goswami comes, everyone moves aside and they say, no, he is the most elevated person. Let him answer. And Shukadev Goswami, by his own birth, at the time of his birth, he was most qualified. And so he wanted to go away from house. So Vyasadeva said, no, 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 don't go away. I'll give you the highest knowledge. And then he gave him the highest knowledge, the essence of, the, of the, all the Vedic literatures, the, the, uh, not the path of sense gratification. And Shukadeva had heard that from his father, Vyasadeva. And so he, sa- he considered that Parikshit is a right person who is also very elevated, his grandparents were pure devotees. He is also a great devotee. To him, I must give the essence of the knowledge. And that was the Srimad Bhagavatam. So actually, Srimad Bhagavatam is nothing but the essence of all Vedic wisdom. It is a, it is a saram saram yat samudhritya. Sarva Veda itihasanam saram saram. Sarva Veda itihasanam saram. So that is the highest knowledge presented in the form of Bhagavatam. In uh, Parikshit and, and uh, uh, Shukadev Goswami and Parikshit conversation, that came out. That is what Shukadev Goswami explained. In the conversation between the sages of Naimisharanya, Sutta Goswami and the sages, Sutta Goswami explained that. So, like this in the history of the universe, there were different occasions where this essence of the Vedic literature was described, including Kapila discussing with his mother. So, Srimad Vyasadeva compiles all of such descriptions and puts them in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's why Bhagavatam is very special. And a glimpse of that is given in the Bhagavad Gita. And it is further elaborated in the Bhagavatam. In the glimpse is given in the sense, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains different yoga, and different kinds of austerities, different yagna. He says all those things. Finally, he says, Sarva dharman paritya jamam ekam sharanam raja. Surrender to me. I've told you so many things. Keep that aside. Just surrender to me. Manmana bhava mad bhakto. Become my devotee, become attached to me, serve me. That is the highest. And the same spirit, keeping aside dharma projita kaitavotram paramo nirmat saranam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam. Srimad Bhagavatam is going to present, keep, keep aside all other compromised religions. Why it was compromised? Because uncompromised religion requires high qualification. One should be ready for nivritti taha sukam. One should be ready to make sacrifice and keep aside sense gratification. Then, if you are ready for that, then you are entitled for highest knowledge. And when you are not ready for the high, to set aside sense gratification, if you are attached to sense gratification, then you are not yet ready. This is the point. So, Prabhupada's use of this expression, criminal sense gratification. Yes, senses. Yes, Krishna gave us the senses so that we can use the senses to glorify him, to serve him, to please him. Oh, we have to use our senses to glorify him and please him? What about my pleasure? No, your pleasure is in glorifying him and serving him because you are a subordinate entity. You have come from him. You are part and parcel of him. When the whole is satisfied, you become satisfied. Just as when the roots are watered, the whole tree gets benefit. When the food is put into the stomach, the whole body becomes nourished. The body, parts of the body cannot be independently nourished. You can't say, I'll hold a bunch of uh, vitamin C tablets in in my fingers and that way I will become enriched with vitamin C. No, you have to put the vitamin C tablets into your stomach. Then from the stomach, vitamin C goes to the entire body. That is the way we are constituted. In the same way, that is the way we as spirit soul, we are constituted. We are part and parcel of Krishna, serving Krishna. 
using our senses to serve Krishna and pleasing him will bring us pleasure. We are entitled for pleasure, but secondary pleasure, not primary pleasure. The conditioned soul's intent is, I must become the primary enjoyer. That is the defect. So, sense gratification in, is in terms of gratifying Krishna's senses and then our, gratify, our senses are gratified as a mercy of the Lord. That's why prasadam, we eat, we eat, we enjoy. But that is first offered to the Lord. Then it is left over. It is his mercy. So this understanding is essential. And when that understanding is not there, when we go about sense gratification, dandyam raja bhatayata, we, are, we have to be, it becomes criminal sense gratification. This is the big picture, wonderful picture that emerges from the teachings of the Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. We'll stop here. Granth Raj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki.